My name is Patricia Rodriguez. I'm a PhD candidate at Louisiana State University um, under Dr. Phil Stouffer. I study the ecological interaction between Afrotropical ant following birds and Doralis driver ants. In particular, I'm interested in looking at the behavior of the Afrotropical ant following birds to try and figure out how specialized they are on driver ants as a resource. So driver ants are part of a larger group of ants that are found across the global tropics called army ants. And they display this really unique and fascinating behavior, which is um, obligate group foraging behavior. So what they'll do is they will leave their nest in the morning um, in these tight little columns and they'll find the area that they want to raid for the day. And what they'll do is they'll spread out in these massive carpets and essentially just raid the forest floor um, eating basically anything that falls in their path. So whether that be uh, arthropods or small vertebrates, um, there's even some cases, I think, of driver ants um, in parts of Africa even trying to eat small people and, and the elderly. So they're really ravenous. Um, and so this is what makes this group of ants in particular really special. So if you can imagine um, that there's a bunch of ants that are raiding the forest floor, and as they're doing so, they're scaring up a bunch of different insects and uh, different food items that these birds might be interested in. So it would be really beneficial for these birds to learn how to follow the ants. And if they can learn how to follow the ants and learn how to find the ants, then what they do is they kind of... Uh, follow them around and wait on the sidelines, right? And as these ants are passing through and they're scaring up all of these insects, the birds will come in and steal uh, different food items that the ants are flushing up. Um, and so these birds, a handful of species of birds that have, have learned to uh, follow the ants really benefit from not having to um, search a wide area for food every day, right? Like they're not waking up and thinking, where's my next meal coming from? I have to search every part of the forest for these little insects that I'm interested in. Instead, they can follow these ants around and these ants provide a really, really rich, abundant food source that they can take advantage of by basically just following the ants around and waiting to steal off uh, little, little pieces of insects and, and prey uh, that, that the ants flush up. Yeah, the ants, the ants can be really, really aggressive. Um, so the doorless driver ants, the Afrotropical ants, are particularly aggressive, even more so than the ants in the Neotropics. So these ants are actually blind, which is really interesting. Um, and they don't have stingers, which is typical of most other ants. Uh, so because they don't have stingers, they have to find another way to kind of protect themselves. And so instead of stingers, they have these massive uh, mandibles. So they're kind of two incisors. You can think of them as like they're chewing mouth parts. Somehow they always find a way to fall out of the sky onto your, onto your backs and they'll just like bite you up and down your neck. And uh, yeah, it really hurts. So we try and avoid that as much as possible. <laughs> These ant following birds um, globally are very, very vulnerable to forest disturbance. So things like forest fragmentation, when somebody comes in and cuts up a forest into a bunch of different pieces, or things like logging um, or deforestation or converting a forest into farmland, all of these things um, tend to harm this group of birds in particular. They're usually the first group of birds to disappear from a forest that's been disturbed. So if you go into a forest and these birds are present and they're really abundant, uh, then we know that um, the forest is relatively healthy. What got me interested in birds in particular is my very last year of college, I took a class called Avian Field Techniques. And in this class, we got to learn how people capture birds. Um, and I got to hold a wild bird for the very first time. Um, and after doing that, I know it's a little cliche, but after I held a bird for the first time, I just thought, well, this is something that I would love to do for the rest of my life.
And then I've just been working with birds ever since.